Okay, today we're going to be talking about masses and tumors, and I'm not going to be drawing on this. We're going to try something different here with Prezi, because Prezi offers a few things that uh, you know we can do, like zoom in really close and look at these big nasty warts on the hands, and that sort of thing. So let's uh, see how this works for us. All right, so masses and tumors, including in this part, are uh, warts, as you just saw, abscesses into susception, volvulus, Meckel's diverticulum, and Hirschsprung's disease, uh, PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome, diabetes, glomerular nephritis, Berger's disease, and Wilms tumor. So let's get started right into this and start talking about warts or verruque. Okay, you'll see uh, warts and verruque some of them on page 1054 of your book. I believe there's also a really nice chart when you start talking about the uh, sexually transmitted infections on page 858 uh, of your book also. But, uh, oops, I think I whacked that here. The uh, warts are, are benign lesions of the skin, so they're benign as in not cancerous, unless we're talking about a very specific kind of HPV or human papillomavirus, so we'll get to that in a minute. But uh, just regular warts, uh, we have common warts that are called Verruque vulgaris. Okay, and by the way, that's Verruque something or other. I can't remember her last name from Willy Wonka. Anyway, so common warts, plantar warts, filiform warts, and genital warts. So we'll look at each of these in a little bit more detail here and, and some pictures of them. So we have the common warts, Verruque vulgaris. That's your ones that you're fine. Uh, oh, I don't know, all over the place around the fingernails or periungual warts. You find them elbows, hands, all sorts of places like that. Okay, plantar warts. These are the ones that are found on your feet, obviously. And we'll see pictures of the plantar warts or the verruque plantaris, plantar warts, plantar sur uh, surface of the foot. And, and that's why it's named like that. So these are found in your more warm, moist environments, right? At the pressure points, they really hurt when you step on them, that makes a lot of sense. And uh, filiform warts, these are the long and narrow little kind of skin tag things that are found in your eyelids, face, neck, that sort of areas. And then of course there's the genital warts, and you have to be a little bit careful when you talk about genital warts because there's a couple of different animals here we're talking about as, as far as whether or not they are uh, sexually transmitted or not. So the condyloma cumulata, or venereal warts, we'll look at that. And then uh, just to mention the condyloma lata, that was a second stage of syphilis. And you can see those um, very specifically, obviously, in uh, sexually transmitted infection and syphilis. And uh, you can see them over the, under, not over, under a dark-filled microscope. And it shows these little spirochetes and... Uh, you know, this is, uh, syphilis is obviously a big issue, especially uh, at sex is, or at, at, uh, at risk, is, uh, is men who have sex with men. Uh, it's also very common in urban and poverty-stricken areas, prison populations for the same reason. And uh, it's transmitted during the first few years of infection, and then... It can also be, by the way, transmitted to the fetus during during pregnancy. But there's a there's a hard they call it a chancra that develops in a primary stage, and then uh, you have systemic symptoms like low grade fever and and malaise or or really tiredness, uh, sore throat, hoarseness, anorexia, headache, joint pain, skin rashes, um, and uh, then when it goes tertiary or, or latent stages, they're usually actually asymptomatic, but you can get neurosyphilis and um, without treatment, of course, and uh, that can also you can also go blind as far as that goes. Anyway, but these uh, warts in general we'll talk about are basically person to person. They're viruses, like I said, the human papilloma virus, but. We'll look into that in a little more detail. Okay, so these are your typical warts that you're found on your body. Obviously, the one on the right is certainly anything but typical. That's pretty severe warts. Okay, the Veruca plantaris. All right, plantar warts on the bottom of the feet, as you can 
as you can clearly see. I uh, want to zoom in on that thing and look at it real close. That's one of the cool things about Prezi that you can do. Okay, and let's look at the Philly form warts. Okay, Philly form warts again. They're talking about uh, that little thing that it's kind of like a little skin tag. If you can zoom in really close on that, I guess it becomes a little blurry when you do that. But uh, Philly form warts. The okay, Condyloma acuminata. Okay, Condyloma acuminata, page 1054 of your book and. This is where you got to be a little careful, okay? This is a benign tumor caused by HPV, the human papillomavirus, usually type 6, though. Now, type 6 is not one of your cancer-causing strains, all right? So, uh, it is highly contagious and skin-to-skin uh, -skin contact. And uh, they say it's a cauliflower-like lesion in moist areas along the glands of the penis, vulva, and anus. So if you look at that... A little bit closer up there you can kind of see the little cauliflower look um, with that but uh, keep in mind uh, that's a second stage of syphilis one here but keep in mind when we're talking about the condyloma acuminata um, that is actually the most common viral uh, sexually transmitted infection in the United States and Again, you kind of have to separate this one to type 6 from the cancer ones, but uh, the HPV in general, the risk factors are, are pretty much the same, right? And that's uh, uh, multiple sexual partners, obviously early onset of sexual activity. And when I say that, what, what uh, the official definition of early onset sexual activity is, is 16 to 25 years of age is considered early onset, therefore higher risk of uh, developing HPV, whether it's the the condyloma cuminata part of it, or whether it's uh, the kind that leads to cervical cancer, is is the same risk as far as that goes. Um, now, the ones that are associated with cervical cancer, um, you're talking about uh, vulvar vulvar cancer also, and uh, you can. Uh, in females, cervical and vulvar. In males, anal, rectal, and squamous cell cancer of the penis in men. So um, these genital warts are contagious and infants can be infected also during delivery. Okay, and the thing about HPV is it's very often uh, asymptomatic, so the person that is carrying it around doesn't have any idea. Okay, there's again our condyloma lata, the second stage of syphilis, and um, just a, a recap on syphilis here, the incidence is higher among men who have sex with men. So we're also talking about urban and poverty-stricken areas and prison populations for the same reason. Uh, during the first few years of having this infection, it can be transmitted. Eventually it uh, can't be. But uh, it can also be transmitted to the fetus during, during uh, pregnancy too. So uh, what you get in the primary stage is a really hard chakra, they call it. And then when it goes uh, uh, systemic or in the uh, second stage of syphilis, then you start seeing you know things like low-grade fever and malaise and sore throat and hoarseness, uh, kind of like you know flu kind of like symptoms. And uh, then you start seeing you know anorexia and, and headaches and joint pains, uh, skin rashes. And, and when it kicks into the latent or tertiary stages, it's usually asymptomatic again, as far as syphilis goes. And problem, of course, is neurosyphilis, not that, you know, this isn't a problem too, but neurosyphilis um, is a um, possibility when it kicks into the third stage, and obviously that can kill you having syphilis in the brain. Okay, moving on to abscesses. So we have abscesses, and uh, one of the things about abscesses, again, page 1053 of the book, like it says up there, uh, most of these are caused by um, Staph aureus, actually, but you can see them uh, in, in Pseudomonas from the hot tubs. So hot tubs is a very common place, unfortunately, to get a folliculitis or an infection around the hair follicle okay and this is you know just a collection of pus 
and it's inflamed and we'll see a picture of that in a second here. Uh, you can also get it from beta hemolytic strep but it's not as common as that, as that staph aureus. Okay. Uh, keep in mind, you know, when we're talking about staph aureus, you're also possibly talking about that methicillin resistant or uh, MRSA, right? The methicillin resistant staph aureus. So this can be a pretty serious thing as far as catching these these nasty little things. Um, back to folliculitis. Um, again, it's usually by staph aureus, and um, what happens here is you get this inflammation that's caused by the release of different chemotactic factors and enzymes from the bacteria and uh, from these enzymes and chemotactic uh, factors that are coming from the bacteria you get these um, um, well you get inflammation and then and then it looks like these pustules and then you got redness around it or erythema uh, usually when you're talking about folliculitis they're they're these um, pustules that are like on the scalp or even on the extremities, arms, legs, that sort of thing. Usually they don't go systemic as far as any kind of bacterial infection going throughout the blood. Um, but as you can see from the from the hot tub thing, you're talking about you know places you get them you know when you have prolonged skin prolonged uh, exposure to very moist skin. Uh, you can get it from skin trauma, of course, where it opens it up. Uh, poor hygiene is also a fairly common reason why people would get uh, folliculitis. Um, you know, what you want to do is you want to just treat them with, you know, soap and water and, and topical antibiotics. You know, they, they tend to take care of folliculitis pretty well. Um, what you don't want to do is have it turn into a carbuncle, okay, because a carbuncle is... Um, a collection of infected hair follicles. Okay, so folliculitis is what we're talking about in general, right? And I've been kind of talking about a furuncle. I guess I didn't mention that, but that's what I've been talking about is a furuncle where you have like one hair follicle that uh, or a boil, okay? And um, now, let me see what I want to say about that. Um, anyway. I guess I want to move on from that and, and talk about the carfuncle. I mean, car, carfuncle, carbuncle, which is a collection of these infected hair follicles, and um, you start seeing these usually on the on the back of the neck or the upper back or even on the lateral parts of the thighs. These things, even though the furuncles hurt, when you have a collection of them, it hurts even more. So now you got. Um, as painful swollen masses that that they drain through all these different places and and of course abscesses and with that again it's, it's a little more severe um, chills fever malaise um, again you just want to treat them you know with uh, uh, treating them you know uh, topically maybe with warm compresses that sort of thing okay um, you hear about abscesses all the time with uh, tooth infections, and I think there's a slide uh, showing an abscess on a tooth infection. Um, but you see all sorts of different kinds of uh, of abscesses as far as that goes. Um, retropharyngeal, as in behind the pharynx, um, you can get that spread and get abscesses. I think there's a picture of that also on your tonsils, sinuses, ears. Alrighty, so pretty pretty um, I think pretty straightforward as far as abscesses or kind of digging a infected hole kind of thing going on there all right painful red warm pus uh, can go to treat it can go to sepsis when you're talking about especially the uh, the retropharyngeal the ones around tonsils and that teeth and that sort of thing okay and you just kind of test them you know clinically you can see them uh, do a CBC, it'll show definitely inflammation going on there, culture the wound, and in some cases you might have to do a CT to to look at them, um, whatever the damage is somewhere in there. Okay, this is your periapical abscess, infection of the actual pulp on the tooth, and uh, you can kind of see where, I think it's right in here, maybe difficult to see with the lighting in here, but 
that's kind of nasty um, it's being it's starting to become pretty bad um, that big boil right in there in the gums okay maybe it's uh, this is how it would look if it was a drawing okay retropharyngeal abscess okay so you can see this uh, the whole area back here is kind of abscessed and you can see where the 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 uvula, the little thing, is kind of shoved over because of that abscess. There's abscess in here too. It looks like, but uh, it's just kind of all nasty and red and kind of, I don't know, eating a little bit of a hole in there. Okay, here's our furuncle again. Looks uh, infected hair follicle in there, and uh, I'm not sure what else to say about that. Nice little interesting little picture I guess if you want to zoom in on it and look at it really close which is you know kind of gross okay carbuncle obviously even more gross so you look at these carbuncles you know really up close that you can see that just a it's a whole bunch of uh, furuncles or hair follicles all involved in there and you can see massive amounts of pus and oozing coming out of there so you know you can look at it on any of these views it's pretty bad okay intussusceptions or volvulus these are two different things so don't get them confused with being the same thing uh, I guess we'll start with intussusception like on page 943 of your book basically all it is and we'll see a picture of that is telescoping of one part of the intestine into another so it uh, kind of overlaps and, and folds in on itself so we'll see that in a minute here as far as the cause goes idiopathic is usually the you know we don't we really don't know what really causes these things they suspect maybe a viral infection the uh, bowel basically the problem with intussusceptions is it cuts off the blood supply to the bowel and uh, it starts literally killing parts of the bowel let me actually uh, look at this here uh, on the picture and then we'll go back to that so there's your little small intestine oh by the way small intestine um, is what's happening here so you know one part is literally telescoping that this part over here is telescoping into the other one folding underneath well if you look really close you see all these uh, vascular tissue here and they're being cut off so you're losing blood supply you're crunching things up and and basically cutting it off so you can see where it's going to cause some of these problems where you get you know the abdominal pain and the red current jelly stools because you're literally losing uh, a lot of blood in there and um, you get some pretty good bleeding going on in there and it, it uh, can cause vomiting too okay uh, it can kill I mean this is a medical emergency by the way this uh, pushing one into the other so uh, it is pretty um, serious and you got to deal with it pretty fast okay um, the one thing about this is what you want to do is you want to look at uh, at this so an enema it, if you want to go ahead and, and uh, put an enema up there to to try to see what's going on a lot of times actually the air enema will actually fix the problem um, on the other hand uh, you can fix it you know even if it doesn't automatically fix it 60 to 70 percent of the time by by uh, looking in there okay did I have a picture of that um, yeah here's our little intussusception so now you get the barium enema that you're putting in there if that doesn't fix it by itself from pure pressure going through there then uh, at least you can you can see it and kind of manually pull it out as you're as you're in there okay anyway let's go to volvulus and uh, volvulus as you can see down here is the intestines are literally twisting up okay now this is usually talking about a baby that this is happening in malrotation and development what really happens is when the um, digestive system is developing um, in the fetus it actually kind of pops right out of the stomach and spins around a little bit and then spins right back in and sometimes it doesn't it gets kind of tangled up in there when it's when it's coming back into the stomach so they call it a malrotation and development 